Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Water Bear Reads, where I discuss illustrated classics and modern classics. My name is Heather. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much to all my new subscribers who subscribed during the last uh, couple of weeks. I really appreciate it. And I also wanted to say thank you to my returning uh, viewers who continue to watch my videos and like and comment. I really appreciate it so much. It just makes me feel so confident and happy. Thank you everyone so much. Today I wanted to show you guys all the new Jane Austen related books that I acquired over the last year. Every time I have a book haul video, I, um, I always hold my Jane Austens back so that I could show you guys in this video. So I hope you'll enjoy it. In the background I have some of the Jane Austen books that I showed you guys in last year's video. So if you haven't seen that one, do check it out. We have wild strawberries that grow in my garden this time of year all over the place. But they're not really great for picking. I tend to just leave them for the birds. And my son and I went to a strawberry farm yesterday and picked some strawberries and had such a good time doing so. We brought them home and ate some of them and they were so juicy and de absolutely delightful. So I put some over there for you guys. So I'm in my summer spot now. My son is home from school and I like this spot because I have to film early in the morning. It's actually about 6 a.m. right now. <laughs> and the sunlight right here is just beautiful. So I like to sit here and film in the morning when I have to do these early morning videos. But I'm going to take a sip of my coffee and wake up properly. <laughs> and then we'll get started. I only picked up one new adapted version of Jane Austen, and that is from the Awesomely Austen series, which I love. I want to collect them all. And the one that I picked up is their version of Emma. Witty Words by Katie Birchall and Delightful Doodles by Eglantine Soulemont. If you are familiar with the Captain Pug series, she's the illustrator of that series, among other series as well. They're all illustrated by Eglantine Soulemont but each one of them is written by a different author. So Katie Birchill, you might know her work if you are familiar with the It Girl series. Tenderly written as well. I really enjoyed the, the writing. It keeps, it keeps you completely riveted. It is missing the scene where they go to Mr. Knightley's for strawberry picking. Also, I wanted to say is, you know, I think in booktube we talk about Jane Austen and how much we love Jane Austen all the time and everybody's reading Jane Austen. But truthfully, there's a lot of people out there who have a hard time reading Jane Austen. It isn't always the easiest um, to read. And I think sometimes if you are struggling to read Jane Austen and to really get pulled in to her writing, sometimes I think it's great to go back to these adapted versions and get the gist of the story and then tackle the original work. That's one of the reasons why I really love these versions. And let me show you the inside. There's the end papers. There's Harriet eating her strawberry. Also at the back, there's this wonderful author's note by Katie Birchall, and um, I really enjoyed it, and I wanted to read a portion of it for you. The thing is, everyone knows that Jane was very clever, very funny, and very talented, but what is sometimes brushed over is that she was also very brave. Back then, women had no power and were expected to look pretty, marry well, and not do much else. They weren't supposed to have a proper education. They weren't supposed to have opinions, to know anything about politics, or to sit around reading. And they certainly weren't supposed to waste their time writing novels. <laughs> so yeah, so it actually took Jane Austen a lot of guts to do what she did. And I just thought that was an amazing point. <laughs> So the next book I want to show you is another addition to my Illustrated Junior Library collection and it is their Pride and Prejudice and it's illustrated by Julie Downing and it's just beautiful. I actually have the cover right here but I took it off just so that the ring light wouldn't reflect. I love this illustrated collection. I think they do such a great job at illustration coverage and um, this illustrator is from Colorado and I think she now lives in San Francisco. And I was reading an interview that somebody had done with her, and she said that she was um, very much inspired by Tasha Tudor's work. There's some of the color illustration. Oh, and I really loved this visual of Pemberley. By the way, I don't remember if I told you guys this, but my mom and I, when we visited the UK, we actually went to Lyme Park 
which was used in the 1995 version of Pride and Prejudice, the one with Jennifer L. and Colin Firth. And um, I tried to get that exact same shot that shows in the series um, where she, Elizabeth is approaching with the carriage. I also wanted to tell you guys that if you do visit Lime Park, before you go anywhere, before you do anything, go to their costume area because they actually allow you to put on period costume and you can just peruse the grounds wearing the costume. It's delightful. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't discover that until just before we were about to leave. I quickly went ahead and just tried something on just to take some pictures and to feel what it's like to wear period costume. But I wish I had known that when we first got there because I would have loved to have walked around the grounds and period costume. <laughs> so if you ever do visit Lime Park, make sure to do that. And I imagine it might be the same for a lot of huge houses that have anything to do with Jane Austen. So do check those out too if you happen to be visiting any of them. Oh, and speaking of period costume, it is a little bit dated. I think it has more of that, you know, sort of 80s look where you know, mustaches were the end thing. The next couple of books I want to show you and chat to you about have to do with early illustrators Hugh Thompson and C.E. Brock. I chatted a bit about Irish illustrator Hugh Thompson in my previous Jane Austen video last year, and I chatted about how he had illustrated that beautiful peacock version of Pride and Prejudice that was published in 1894 by George Allen. They, Hugh Thompson had really made a name for himself illustrating Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford. When Hugh Thompson illustrated Pride and Prejudice, he did three things. He created more illustrations than had ever been done before. I think it was like 160 illustrations. He also was the first illustrator to really capture Jane Austen's humor. And then he also was the one to use the peacock and by using that peacock in his version he associated um, the peacock with pride and prejudice for him the peacock symbolized courtship and vanity and the display of wealth and beauty and all those things really spoke to him so that's why he chose the peacock as the symbol and it really took off not just for pride and prejudice but for hugh thompson's identity as well which brings me to the next book i want to show you it is a truth universally acknowledged that should i come across a book with a gorgeous cover that more than likely the interior of the book will be completely devoid of illustrations and i therefore to be true to my craft We'll have to look away. So you can imagine my delight when I was walking through Bam Bookstore one day and I came across the Cranford collection and I looked inside to discover that what I previously assumed were not illustrated, I see these all the time on Instagram, actually do have some illustrations. This one's by Hugh Thompson who I just spoke about. They have a frontispiece, and there's, um, as I said, how he is associated with the peacock. It's the Cranford collection, and it has the peacock on it, and of course, Hugh Thompson made his name by illustrating Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford. But it also has his beautiful peacock chapter illustration with the drop cap. And I just thought that was really beautiful. And that's, those are the only illustrations that the book has. But I was just so happy to find that it did actually have some illustrations in it that I could show you guys. And there's that bit on the back. I actually picked up others that they had at BAM Bookstore. And I was rather surprised to find them there, I'll be honest. I see these books. Oh, there's a beautiful cardinal on the tree. Anyway, I see these books all the time when I'm on Instagram all over the place and I just assumed that they were collector's items and difficult to find. So when I saw them at BAM at Books A Million, I was just blown away and they were for a good price too. The other illustrator that I mentioned that I wanted to chat about holds the distinction of being one of the first two illustrators to illustrate Pride and Prejudice in color. He was joined by his brother, Henry, or otherwise known as H.M. Brock. And the two brothers together illustrated the um, six main novels. C.E. Brock had actually illustrated Pride and Prejudice previous to this in black and white line drawings, but new technology came about that allowed for color printing. So in 1898, just three years later, Macmillan approached the two brothers asking them if they would illustrate the six main Jane Austen novels in color. His brother took Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, and Pride and Prejudice. 
and C.E. Brock took Persuasion, Emma, and Sense and Sensibility. The reason I bring him up specifically is that later on C.E. Brock or Charles Brock illustrated the full set of the six novels for the Dent English Idols collection. I think this was 1907 to 1909. And he created 24 color illustrations. And that brings me to the next book that I wanted to show you, which I picked up at Barnes and Nobles. There's also a Sense and Sensibility that I found as well. And they're such an excellent price point. I think I picked this up for $10. This one holds the illustrations of two illustrators, Hugh Thompson as well as C.E. Brock. I think the cover is very interesting because it has the black and white illustrations to represent Hugh Thompson and then it has the color illustrations that represent C.E. Brock and I think it's just a wonderful combination of early illustrators. It has that sort of 60s look which I just really love. This cameo is is a symbol of the Dent Idols collection, so I thought that was pretty clever. I noticed it here as well as it's also in the front as well. So each one of the Jane Austen books that C.E. Brock illustrated in that original series has a different cameo. So I just thought that was pretty cool. And here's one of Charles Brock's illustrations. Here's a Hugh Thompson another C.E. Brock. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it is missing that beautiful peacock that Hugh Thompson has in his version, but it does have a header illustration, and it, and it does not have all of Hugh Thompson's illustrations in it, but it has the majority of them. I've really been enjoying the PBS Masterpiece series, the Sanditon series. I watch and rewatch the episodes all the time, and I actually looked on PBS Masterpiece website and I found a list of several Sanditons that have been continued, because I wanted to find out um, what it was based on. And I found while looking through the PBS Masterpiece website that the first episode of Sanditon is very true to Jane Austen's Sanditon fragment. But the first season is based on the continuation by Kate Riordan. I also noticed that there were other versions of Sanditon. I believe the very first Sanditon was written by Jane Austen's niece, whose name I'm forgetting at the moment. I'll put it out on the screen. Um, that one is quite difficult to find, and I also found out that it was not quite finished from what I read. I'm not sure about that, but I did actually find a version on Internet Archives. So if you want to go on Internet I Archives and just put in her name, the one I put on the screen that I can't remember, it comes up and you don't even have to borrow it. It's just there for you to look at if you want. I decided to go with another version, Sanditon, written by Jane Austen and another lady. First of all, I just loved <laughs> <laughs> the fact that she just called herself another lady. <laughs> I thought that was so witty. And I felt like someone who has that sort of wit could probably do a good job of continuing a Jane Austen fragment. I actually had ordered a paperback version with a different cover. I had tried to find one that was illustrated and I haven't come across one yet, but I'm sure there must be one out there. But I did order a different cover, but it came with this cover. <laughs> But this one's nice too, I think, so I'll put the one that I ordered on the screen for you. It says, Jane Austen's enchanting heroine sets out to snare Regency England's most dashing eligible bachelor. Superb. <laughs> I actually want to make my way through all the Sanditons, including Jane Austen's niece, as well as there's another one by, I think her name is Juliet Shapiro, and also, of course, the Kate Riordan one. I suppose I should have looked up what another lady's real name is. If I do find it, I'll put it up on the screen. But um, yeah, so I'm very excited to begin reading this. I'm just finishing um, another book and then I'm going to get started with this one next. I did manage to find an illustrated version of Jane Austen's shorter works in this Folio Society from 1975 and it's really pretty. It did come with a slipcase, just a plain gray slipcase. This one is illustrated by Joan Hassel, who was um, from Notting Hill, London, and she worked primarily in woodcuts. Oddly enough, she also illustrated a version of Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford. And it's really neat. It has these really cool end papers that have a portrait of Jane Austen and Chawton Cottage, which we also visited when we went to England. I showed you um, snippets from that part of our visit in my last Jane Austen video. 
And then here are some of her illustrations, which I thought was beautiful. This frontispiece. Here is one from Sanditon that I thought was relevant. You can see that. And then there seems to be one illustration per work. As usual with the Folio Society editions, there's always a very interesting introduction. And this introduction is written by Richard Church. And I thought I would just read a quick little um, portion of it to you. What more do we learn of Jane from this juvenilia? And the piece is called The Watsons, written in 1803, Lady Susan, written in 1805, and Sanditon in 1817, not long before her death. The first discovery is that from the beginning she possessed the gift of storytelling. The juvenilia preserved in the three manuscript volumes dated 1790 to 1793 all create suspense and expectation in the reader's mind, no matter how short the fragments. It is not easy to define this quality. We find it also in drawings or snatches of music thrown aside by a master hand. Here are the shorter works included, Lady Susan, Love and Friendship, The Watson, Sanditon, Catherine, um, the History of England. Minor novels are Leslie Castle, Evelyn, Frederick and Elfrida, Jack and Alice, Edgar and Emma, Henry and Eliza, and The Three Sisters. So those are the works included in this version. I really love the Marjolaine Baston series. In my last video, I showed you my Emma. And this year for my birthday, my birthday was back in April. And by the way, I have a major book haul video coming for you. I pulled out the Jane Austen related books from the book haul video, but I still have many, many others to show you. So anyway, my mom purchased the Pride and Prejudice and gifted it to me for my birthday, and I couldn't be happier. I love reading this way. I love it when you turn the page and you just never know what illustration to expect. So like, for example, here's an out of the blue, an indigo bunting, or a beautiful decoration of rose hips. And it's just a really fun, relaxing way to read a classic. And I really hope she continues doing more. I keep looking and looking to see if she announces a new one. If I happen to notice one before I put this video out, I'll pop it up on the screen. What I also love about these versions are the extra ephemera that you find throughout the book. In this particular one, there's dance cards, there's a family tree, letters, of course. There's also sheet music. But what I love most about it is there's this biography of Jane Austen's life and I wanted to read a little bit to you because it includes a little bit about her romantic life as well. And here it goes. In 1801, the unmarried Jane, her parents, and her unmarried sister Cassandra moved to Bath, a town in western England. During one summer vacation, Jane fell in love with a man and began planning their future, but he died shortly thereafter. A year later, family friend Harris Bigwither proposed to her. She accepted the proposal but reversed her decision the next morning. Although uncommon given the time period, Jane never married. So the movie Wicked is coming out in the autumn and it put me in mind that I've never read Wicked. And I started thinking about that and I want to definitely pick up Wicked a little closer to the fall and read Wicked. It also had me thinking of another book that um, it feels like everyone in the universe has read but I still haven't read and that's Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> I also love the idea of Summerween and I always try to read something that's a little along the lines of horror, of the horror genre in um, the summer. Last year I read The Haunting of Hill House and I was actually going to read We Have Always Lived in the Castle and I may still do that but I do want to try and get in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies this month because I just have never read it and I feel like I'm like the only person in the universe who hasn't read this book else. In fact I had this last year when I did my Jane Austen July video but just had totally forgotten about it because I'm so used to looking at it. And I hadn't realized until I picked it up about a month ago or so that it's actually illustrated, illustrated by Philip Sidney. And the illustrations are really cool. At about the same time, my sister sends me a message and she says, do you know that Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters is illustrated? Which is illustrated by a different illustrator, Eugene um, Smith, I believe. Eugene, yeah. Eugene Smith. And let me show you an illustration. Here's a good one. I'll probably wait for Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters to perhaps next year, but I thought it might be fun to go ahead and read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I've seen the movie and I loved it. I love the actors in that movie. So I just thought I would make that sort of a combo Summerween and Jane Austen July read. <laughs> 
Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Gosh, I really hope you can't hear my stomach rumbling. I haven't had breakfast yet. For my birthday, my husband and my son gave me the most generous Folio Society gift card, and I purchased four books with it because I waited for the Folio Society to send me my birthday discount. They send you a birthday discount if you subscribe. I bought four books, and I'm saving two of them to show you in my actual book haul video when I do my birthday book haul, <laughs> my eventual birthday book haul video and so I'll show them to you then but I did get two Jane Austen titles so I wanted to show those to you there's a twin sister illustrator team the Balbuso twins and I just love their work so much and it is such an experience to read a classic using their illustrations in March I was looking for something you know green I was thinking green and I wanted to do something green for St. Patty's Day and I was re and I thought hmm what's green that I could read so I ended up pulling out The Great Gatsby and this is the first time I've ever read The Great Gatsby since high school and I read it this way using this version by the Balbuso twins and it was such an experience I am totally in love with this novel and it was and so enhanced by their illustrations. It was just beautiful. So I had the Balbuso twins in my mind already, and I was thinking, I really need to get their version of Pride and Prejudice, and so I had decided to do that. And I'm so happy to have this version. It's so beautiful. And of course, it comes with a slipcase. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. I love their illustrations. I've, I've chatted about them before on this channel when I showed you Sisters in Science, and I chatted about how clever their illustrations are. They're always so well thought out, so well planned, and they have this amazing ability to convey an idea or a feeling about a situation. So here is when Elizabeth is playing the piano at Lady Catherine de Bourgh's, and there's Mr. Darcy reflection in the window in the mirror sorry and then there's all those the shadows of everyone else that's in the room with them around them but it's only those two that matter and i just thought that was so beautiful and so amazing here's another one where um, elizabeth is reading mr darcy's letter and i love how the swirls are put in to show sort of the mixed emotions that she's feeling at that moment when Elizabeth is looking at Mr. Darcy's portrait. As I said before, Folio Society does the most wonderful introductions. This one is introduced by Sebastian Folks, and he argues that what's amazing about Jane Austen's writing is how it's actually up to the reader to decide whether a character is good or bad or worthy or unworthy. So many of her characters depend so much on your own life experience and, and how you interpret them. And I just wanted to read this small paragraph to show what I mean. The same dynamic applies to the characters of Elizabeth's parents. Mrs. Bennet is foolish and vulgar, but she is a loving mother and stands up for her daughters. Mr. Bennet is affectionate and educated but so selfishly indolent that he fails to rise to the occasion when Lydia elopes. He is the cleverer person, but she is the better parent. So anyway, I just thought that was a very interesting perspective. There was a time when I saw Mr. Collins and I saw the mom and I saw other characters in Pride and Prejudice as sort of one dimensional. And as I grew older and learned more about people, the characters changed. And that's what I love about Jane Austen's writing is how interactive her characters are with you and your own personal um, experiences. And I know there's a lot of classic authors out there who do write characters like this, but I think Jane Austen does such a good job at it. So anyway, that's my Folio Society Pride and Prejudice by Anna and Elena Bulbosa. The other book that I wanted to show you was Folio Society Mansfield Park, and I'm so proud to have this version. I was kind of wondering what I should get this year when I had my gift card, but I was swayed because I had recently seen um, Anne over at In Search of Wonder. She had read Mansfield Park and she had done this wonderful review. 
And I had listened to it and I was reminded of all the reasons why I loved Mansfield Park. And I read this a long time ago. I think it was, it's, gosh, it's got to be over 15 years ago since I've read Mansfield Park. When I read the other Jane Austen books, I find them entertaining and, and cozy and fun and enjoyable. But Mansfield Park just kind of really stuck with me. I read not long ago somewhere, I don't remember where, where one of her critics said that she just had no range. All she could write about was women's issues and society and just fun, fluffy stuff. And I was thinking to myself, did they ever read Mansfield Park? <laughs> this one is illustrated by Daria Shnikina, and she is from Moscow, from Russia. And she was the winner of the 2017 Illustration Awards that the Folio Society puts on with the um, House of Illustration every year. So she was totally new to illustration and she won the commission to illustrate the Folio Society Mansfield Park. So I thought that was just a, an amazing story to read about. Let me show you some of her illustrations. I love her colors and the expressions on people's faces. They're beautiful. And here's another one. And, you can really feel the shift in emotions there. I just really adore this one. I think this is beautiful. There at the end. And this Folio Society edition boasts an introduction by none other than Lucy Worsley. And I was reading over her introduction and I just wanted to read you something very interesting that she wrote. Edward Austin would thrive in his new role as a major landowner and often had his impecunious sisters to stay with him at Godmersham Park. But there, like Fanny, Jane Austen could not help feeling like the poor relation. If it hadn't been for his generosity, claimed his snobbish daughter, Jane and her sister Cassandra would have been, though not less clever and agreeable in themselves, very much below par as to good society and its ways. It's a sentence that could have been written by Fanny Price's ever-critical aunt, Mrs. Norris. Mansfield Park has a lot of Jane Austen's experiences. Her younger brother Edward was sent to wealthy relations and raised with wealthy relations and then eventually inherited. And when Jane Austen and her sister Cassandra would come visit, she had that same experience. She was looked down upon and thought of as the poor relations. And so she kind of had that same experience that Fanny Price had. And I also wanted to quickly read another little portion that she had written that goes back to where I was talking about Mansfield Park. The estate of Mansfield Park is both good and rotten at the same time, and the characters respond to the great question of the age, slavery, religion, wealth, right, wrong. This novel could have read reform or ruin as its motto. One of its subjects is the improvements of society. So yeah, I just thought that was relevant to what I was saying before about how I feel that Mansfield Park has just such a, a depthness to it. Mansfield Park by the Folio Society, illustrated by Daria Schneekena. Well, that is it. I hope you've enjoyed all these new additions to my Jane Austen collection. If you are participating in Jane Austen July, please do let me know in the comments what you will be reading. And if you are planning on reading Sanditon, let me know in the comments if you plan to read The Fragment or if you will be reading a continuation. If you are new to this channel and you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. It really helps my channel grow. Before I go, I just want to say thank you so much to all the other booktubers who have given me mentions over the last month. Katja over at Page Turners with Katja, uh, Dia over at Novel Idea, and uh, Jen at Jen's Reading Life. Thank you so much. I also want to especially thank Celeste over at A Reader's Almanac and and at In Search of Wonder for highlighting some of my videos. I really appreciate it. But to all my viewers, thank you so much. For